Bang! Needs knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife Kara is at work and today we got a knife battle and it's going to be a bloody one. We got seven different knives, 11 different categories. We're going to base it on a number system between between 1 and 10. 10 being the best, 1 being pure garbage. Now, don't fast forward to the end because one knife might get an overall better point average, but it might have been beat in a couple other categories by another knife. So definitely watch the whole thing. And in my non-Boston accent that I've never visited in my life, let's get started. So to start things off, we have the concept cryo in D2 and Micarta with steel liners. Then we have the Rat 1, Aus 8 blade steel, FRN handles also with steel liners. Then we have the Rake P135, steel frame lock, 14C28N blade steel. Next up, we have the Concept Main Street, D2 steel, Warncliffe blade shape, steel liners with micarta then we have the sen cut actium d2 blade steel with a hollow ground drop point blade steel liners g10 scales next we have the asher nomad 2.0 and s35 vn blade steel axis lock steel liners g10 scales next up we have the orion solaris in 14 c 28 n blade steel drop point blade flat ground and it's a button lock with g10 scales now, you guys are free to argue with me down in the comments if you disagree with anything that I say in this video. Now, I'm going to start this one off with toughness. Which knife is overall the toughest one? Which one could take the most abuse? Now, a lot of people would argue the rat one. Why would they argue the rat one? Well, there's many videos of this thing taking a lot of abuse. And there's actually a video by Blade Brigade New York where he absolutely demolished a bunch of knives and the rat one came out on top. And it really shows you how tough one of these knives are. Giant stop pin liner lock that's very strong steel full liners with many standoffs we're missing a standoff on this one but we're gonna forget about that but i might have to argue the rake p135 it is a steel frame lock with a lock and that lock stops it from failing Ooh, that's a tough one because I honestly think that that lock would probably make it stand out over the rat one. And I think the blade is a bit thicker. Yeah, it is. 14C28N is a tough steel. So, but all in all, the toughest lock in this house is the access lock. It's definitely tougher than a liner lock or a frame lock. But I think the blade would snap on this one before this one. So I'm going to overall say, because of this lock, that the rake has got that one in the bag. But if we had to go down the scale of 1 to 10 on, you know, 1 being it being very weak or 10 it being very strong, let's give it a rating. So I gave the cryo a five. I gave the rat an, a seven. I gave the rake an eight. I gave the main street a five, the sen cut actium a five, and I gave the asher a seven, and I gave the orion a four because it's a button lock. So Button locks usually aren't the strongest out of locking mechanisms. Still a strong lock, but, you know, compared. Now, obviously, some of these categories are going to be based solely on my opinion. Like I said, argue with me down in the comments. Next up is 
ergos. How do the ergos feel when cutting, not just squeezing them in the hand? And the cryo is going to get a 7 out of 10. Then next, the rat. The rat is a very comfortable knife. You can choke up because it's not a flipper or does not have a flipper. I will give the rat an 8. Next up, the Rake P135 is going to get a 4. And it's still a comfortable knife, but, you know, compared to the rust. Next, the Main Street. The Main Street is going to get an 8. Then the Sen Cut Actium. Now, I know a lot of it has to do with this geometry, but man, this boy's comfortable too. It's also going to get an 8. Next up, we have the Asher Knife. It is going to get a 5. It's, it's pretty comfortable considering, but compared to the other ones, not quite as comfortable. And then the Orion is going to get a seven very comfortable knife so i think that's a pretty good score next up we have the clip the clip and carry basically like how it feels going in and out of the pocket so the cryo it would totally get a 10 if the screws weren't dome shaped. So because of that reason, it is going to get an eight, but the clip works great in and out of the pocket. It is a great, great clip, great tension, great everything, deep carry. Next, the rat. The rat is going to get a seven. The clip works great. It just leaves a little bit hanging out of the pocket, a little bit more than I'd like. Now, it's not like it's crazy, and that's why, you know, it's still got a really high score because it is a great clip. Next, we have the rake. A nice deep carry clip. It does go in and out of the pocket just fine, but it does have dome-shaped screws that tend to... It hits sometimes, so it's going to get a... Six. It's a good clip. Good clip. Above above average, but you know, still, it's got the the screws in the way, and yeah, I'm giving it a six. Next, we have the main street. The main street is going to get a ten. Why did it get a ten? Well, even though it's not a deep carry clip, which I don't care about a deep carry clip, that means nothing to me. Obviously, I don't want two inches hanging out of my pocket, but it is a titanium milled clip that works oh so good. It's a great example of a titanium milled clip, and a lot of titanium milled clips get it wrong, but in this case, they he get they got it right. So, great great clip. Next, we have the Sun Cut. It does have flat screws, and it is a deep carry clip. It's not in set, but it's going to also get... It's going to get uh, a 9. We'll give it a 9. It would have got a 10 if it was in set, but it's not. Next, we have the Nomad. The Nomad, the Asher Knives Nomad. Great clip. It works great. It is deep carry, but it also does not have flat screws, um, at least not on my example. So because of that reason, it is going to get a 7. And then this is a complete biasy on my opinion, but the Orion, I do not like the ball clips, the clips that have a ceramic ball or the titanium milled ball at the end. I just don't like the way they go over the seam of my pants. So in this case, it's going to get a six. But that is completely me being biased. I just, you know, I don't like the way they go, especially when I have so many pairs of pants that have tore up pockets. You know, I dread putting those type of clips in my pocket after, you know, so long. Next, we have ease of sharpening and life. What does that mean? Well, how easy is it to sharpen? And how much life goes away when you sharpen it? 
So if you don't know what I mean, every time you sharpen, you remove steel. And every time you remove steel, you know, it takes away the life of a knife. Sometimes it can actually take away the looks of a knife. It can make it look like it's been sharpened a lot when it's only been sharpened once because they don't give you a good sharpening choil. Or maybe the plunge grind is too close and then it makes a smile. And then maybe you have to put in your own, you know, sharpening choil. Um, does it matter when it comes down to it? No, but aesthetically, it's not aesthetically pleasing. So let's get into it. So the first one, the cryo, the, the, the concept cryo. It has a small recurve, which doesn't give you that much benefits in cutting. Does it give you a little bit? Yes, it does. I, I, I'll admit it does give you a little bit of benefit, but not enough to justify this little bit of a recurve. So it's going to get docked for that for sure. And then they didn't give you a very big sharpening show. They did give you a little bit. You got a couple sharpenings, but after a few sharpenings, it will you know, it'll take that sharpening choil out and there won't be much life left. So we are going to give that one a five. Actually, I had a second thought. We're giving it a four. We're giving it a four. It's getting a four. Next up, we have the wrap. Now, it doesn't have a sharpening choil. Now, you might think that I'm going to just dock the hell out of it for that, but I'm not because they did the plunge grind right. That's what matters. Um, if you do the plunge grind right, it won't show. You can go right up the plunge grind with your sharpening and it won't look any different so in this case for the rat we will give it a seven next up we have the rake p135 now they did give you a sharpening choil and it's a decent one it's not the best but it's a decent one they did give you um you know enough room to sharpen up a few times before it really starts showing so we're gonna say a six Next, we have the Main Street. Now, the Main Street really did not give you a sharpening trail, at least much of one. But what they did do is they did give you some steel to remove. So, since they give you some steel to remove and they didn't give you a crazy dramatic uh, plunge, I'm going to also give it a a six. We'll give that that one a six too. It's not too bad. Now the sun cut actium. That one's gonna get a nine. Ah, it's gonna get a ten. It, it'll have to get a ten because it's got a big finger choil which acts as a sharpening choil, and you've got a lot of life to sharpen out of this thing before it will ever show at all. Next we have the Asher. The Asher knife. Uh, we'll give it because it does have a sharpening choil and it's a pretty decent one and the plunge grind it's done okay it's going to be a few sharpenings before you hit it so we will give it a seven and then the orion the orion does give you a sharpening choil the plunge grind is getting pretty close to that edge but they still did give you plenty to remove from that edge before you hit that plunge grind. We will also give that one a seven. Next up is cutting geometry. Cutting geometry. Now, this one's pr a pretty big one for a lot of people. So, let's get into it. The cutting geometry of the cryo, we will give it a five. It's actually pretty good. It's not great, like compared to great, but it's, it's still pretty good. Um, it does cut relatively well and does pass through materials pretty good. The rat. The rat one is, you know, mine's been sharpened quite a bit, but it does have a relatively thin blade stock. And it's not crazy thick behind the edge. It's got a thinner blade stock than the cryo. Um, it's kind of hard to judge uh, this, but I'm also going to give that one a five. Next up, we have the Rake P135. You know, the geometry on this is not the best, so I will give this one a four. 
next up we have the concept main street i will also give this one a five next up we have the sun cut actium very thin behind the edge nice hollow ground blade and you know that was also another thing with the the sharpening with it you know being a hollow grind it's not going to continue to get thicker so that also helps with sharpening and the life of the sharpening and this one's going to get for cutting geometry it's going to get a nine now the the next one the asher i'm going to give this one a seven it cuts pretty good it's got a relatively thin blade stock not the thinnest behind the edge but it's thinner than the first version and it does cut pretty good next we have the orion the orion is going to get a six for cutting geometry cutting geometry if you don't know what it is it's basically between the thickness of the blade down to the edge and the taper of which it goes down from the thickness to the to the thinnest part of the edge and how good it passes through materials when cutting blade steel and materials so we're just going to look at the blade steel and materials all as one number so the cryo has micarta steel liners and D2 steel, we will give it a, you know, and this does kind of have, you know, the relevance of the, the value. So, but that also is a category coming up. So let's not think of the value, even though it's kind of hard not to. I'm going to give the cryo a six. And you know what, actually, I mean, I'm, I'm yeah, eh, mm. let's give it a five. We'll give it a five. Next, the rat with its OS eight steel liners, FRN handles. It's going to get a three. Next, fourteen C twenty eight N and the steel frame lock. Uh, we will give that one a. I want to give it a big number for the 14C28N. I love 14C28N, um, but it does have the steel frame lock. Um, we'll give it a six. We'll give it a six. Next, we have the Main Street D2 with micarta steel liners, basically the same thing as the first concept. It has a titanium clip, though, so we will... I wish I'd give a 0.5. You know, we're gonna um, we're gonna match that one right up with the the other one at, for a six, or sorry, I mean a five. Same thing as its uh, cousin over there. So that's a five. You know, D two. It's it's not the best steel. It's it's pretty good depending on the price, but eh, it's kind of yesterday's news. Next, we have the sudden cut. The sun cut is also going to get a five with D2 steel G10 handles or G10 scales. Ah, technically, I should dock this one, right, for the G10 while the other ones have my carta. You know what? Yeah, I got to be right about this. It's going to get a four. Next, we have S35 VN blade steel on the Asher with G10 and an access lock steel clip. We are going to give that one a six, eh, seven. We'll give it a seven. In the Orion 14C28N G10 and button lock with the steel liners and a titanium clip. I love my 14C28N and I'm going to give this one a seven. So next we have build quality, starting with the concept cryo. It has T8s and a T10 pivot, which is awesome. Um, does have T6s on the screws, and it does have really good build quality. I'm going to give it a six. 
Next, we have the Rat. It does have a bunch of T6s, but it is built very, very tough. Um, man, the T6s are going to dock it a little bit. If those were all T8s, it would definitely be a 7, but I'm just going to, I'm going to give it a, I'm also going to give it a 6. Next, we have the Rake. The Rake has T6s, T8 Pivot. The build quality is really good, but it's going to get a 5. Next, we have the Concept Main Street, which is also going to get a 6 for the T10 Pivot, T8 Hardware, and it does have great build quality. Next, we have the Sen Cut. The Sen Cut has a T8 Pivot. T8s all the way around. I'm happy with that. It will also get a 6. It has great, great build quality. Next, we have the Asher. Oh, it does have some T6s. I did have some trouble with the bearings off the bat. They did replace them really quick. But because of that reason, I will dock it and give it a 5. The Orion. The Orion has nice big hardware. Um, I'm happy with the build quality. Build quality is great. I do have a little bit of detent lash, though. So it's going to get a 5. Next up is value. The value. So, man, this one's going to be tough. Value. So the concept knives... They can be a little bit, a little bit pricey. Not, not too bad usually. And at $56, the cryo is going to get, if it didn't have D2, it would definitely be higher, but it's going to get a six. Next, we have the rat at $35. It's OS8. It's $35. Bucks. It is our FRN though. They could use G10. It's going to get a four. Next, we have the Rake P135 at $50. It's also going to get a 4. Even though it's using 14C28N, 50 bucks for stainless steel. Uh, come on. They, you know, they, they sell other knives in 14C28N for better money. Um, next, we have the Concept Main Street, $78. It does have my card in titanium, though. So we're gonna give that one a five. Five. Um, next, the Sun Cut Actium at forty-four dollars. When I bought it, I got it for thirty-eight bucks, but the prices went up. It's forty-four bucks now. Still a hell of a deal for this knife. This knife is great. I know it's D two, but considering all the other things that is great about it, the hollow grind, great uh, sharpening drill, deep carry clip. Um, flat screws, T8s all the way around. We're going to give it a 7 for sure. Next up, the Asher. This is also a great deal. S35 VN blade steel for around 80 bucks. That's a good deal. Um, it's right, I think it's a little over 80 bucks, but right around that area. Um, we're going to say, we'll give it a 7 as well. Next, we have the Orion 14C28N, button lock, G10, titanium clip, um, right around $80 as well. Um, man, I want to give that one a 7 too. That's a pretty good deal. Um, oh, man. Um, it's hard for me to give the Asher a 7 for the same price with S35VN. I like 14C just as much, though. Um, yeah, I'll just... I'm going to give it a 7 as well. You know, I'm looking at all the things, not just, you know, the materials. I'm also looking at all the other things as well when considering this. I did have the appearance and looks on this. I'm going to take that one away because it's so subjective. I'm just going to take that one away. It does leave 10 um, different categories now. I'm taking it out just because it is so subjective. Next, action. Then we have action, then the detent, which I know is two in the same, but they're really not. So let's get into it. Action on the concept 
cryo is very, very good. The detent is so well tuned. Nice flipper tab. Easy access to the lock bar. I'm going to give this one a 7. <laughs> it's going to get a 7. The Rat 1 is going... It has a great thumb stud action. Um, But I'm going to give it a... You know, it has really good thumb stud action. Um... It's hard for me to complain about that type of thumb stud action. Mine's very smooth. But it's going to get a 5. Next to the rake. The rake is going to get a 4. It has a very light detent. I, I can e I can easily not fail it, but it's also very easy to fail. I do have to try to flip it because if I just, you know, wah, wah. I can reverse flip it though. I almost would like to just rip off the flipper tab and give it a speed hole. So it's going to get a four. You know what? It's going to get a three. It's going to get a three. Next we have the Concept Main Street. Great thumb stud action, great reverse flick on bearings, easy access to the lock bar, very, very smooth. The th I tend to slip off this thumb stud sometimes, even though it's so good. It really is good. Um, there's usually nice gripping on it, but for some reason, my thumbs tend to slip off of it sometimes. See? Right there. So, I'm going to give it a six. No, a five. Ugh. Yeah, I'll give it a five. It's really good, though. It really is. Next, the Actium. Great flipping action. Great thumb stud action. Great reverse flicking action. Easy access to the lock bar. Super smooth. The, the, the thumb studs are well placed. I mean, they are just so good. Um, so easy to get to. They're nice and grippy on either side. Same thing with the flipper tab. Nice and grippy. It's going to get a 9. Next, the Asher. Access lock. Thumb stud action is really good, but I do have a little bit of stick in the access lock, which isn't a big deal to me. Technically, it just means it's locked up really strong because it is very, very strong. I mean, I have no play any direction. Um, and it is really good. So I'm going to give it a eight. I'm going to give it an eight. Then that's because I'm not really worried about that little bit of stick. Next, we have the Orion. It has multi-row bearings, a button lock, multiple deployments, all different directions. Now, I do have um, some pretty good detent lash. But that drop, man, is very, very smooth. And you can use the button to open it. You can use the access lock on this to open, too. I forgot to say that. But, oh, man. I'm going to give the action a 9 too. Same thing with uh, the sun cut. It's also going to get a 9. Now, we have one more category, and that is detent. The detent. The detent. I already flicked them all, but the detent on this one is so well-tuned. I'm going to give this one a an 8. Eight for D10 because it's multiple deployments, so it's going to get an eight. Um, the rat, the rat actually has a pretty good detent as well. Not as finely tuned as the concept, so I'll say six. It's still really good though. You know, anything basically above four is, is good. Next, the rake detent sucks. Three. 
You know what? Actually, a two. A two, because this is specifically about the detent. I should have gave it a one. But I gave it a two. The main street is a very good detent. Nice for slow rolling. Nice for flicking. Um, it's really nice. Um, I'm going to give it also an, uh, an eight. The detent on the send cut is probably the best on the board. So I'm going to have to give it a nine. Because it is so well tuned. I mean... I can't, it's got the best detent on the table. Um, this isn't really a detent, but basically it is. It's really good though. Um, I'm going to give it a seven. Now the Orion. Mine's a little, not the best detent. Mine's pretty soft. I do have to kind of mean to, to use it. It's not really strong. And it might be just mine. You know, yours might be different than mine. But I have to really flip it to really get some action. Otherwise, you can kind of hear it. So I have to mean to flip it. But it's easy to do, you know, I'm not saying it's hard to do, but for the detent, I'm going to give it a five. Detent's not great on it, on my example at least. All right, I'm going to add all these up and we'll get a total number. So, all in all, the Cryo got 61. The Rat got 55. So, we'll just put them in order like this. We'll start scooting them over. Next... The Rake P135 got 48. Next, the Main Street got 63. Next, the Sen Cut got 76. The Asher got 67. So it got like that. Yeah, and then the Orion got 63. So, which I'm surprised, I'll be honest, I'm surprised that um, this got a higher number than these. Not saying it's worse or better or whatever, but I would have thought it had been a little bit closer. I mean, I guess it still is pretty close. We got, what, a 67, a uh, 63. And a 61. So all in all, it goes 76, 67, 63. Oh, wait. The main street and these two got a tie. 63. So these two are tied up. And then the cryo's got a 61. Wow. That must have been the sharpening um, that brought it down. Then the rat got, or the, the rat got a, a 55 and then a 48 for the rake. So there you guys go. I hope this was fun. I know it was very long. I love you guys. Peace.